here what we're hoping to actually cover is that food webs may be composed of several food chains. Also, hopefully, we'll know the difference between a food chain and a food web. Now, you may have come across food chains before, and you may know that they all start what we call a producer. Now, in this case here, the producer is the leaf. The leaf catches energy from sunlight, and what it does, it photosynthesizes, and then it will trap the energy, and it might get eaten by a caterpillar. So here's a caterpillar eating the leaf. Now notice here the arrow. Now what the arrow means actually means eaten by. So we're saying here that the caterpillar eats the leaf. So energy is transferring in this direction here and to complete the food chain we may find then that the um, caterpillar is eaten by a blue tit and the blue tit eventually could be eaten by a barn owl. So here we've got our complete food chain. Leaf, caterpillar, blue tit, barn owl. Now the arrows show who is eating who. So the barn owl is eating the blue tit, who is eating the caterpillar, who is eating the leaf. But also shows, as I said before, the direction of energy flows. So energy is flowing from the sun to the leaf, to the caterpillar, to the blue tit, to the barn owl. So energy is flowing in this direction here. Okay. Now let's think about this in a bit more detail, shall we? We can think about it in terms of what's called a food pyramid. Now a food pyramid actually shows the numbers. Here's our same um, food chain up here. We can express it in terms of what we call a food pyramid. At the bottom we'll have thousands of plant leaves. We then may have hundreds of caterpillars, may have a few tens of blue tits and one or two owls. The least numerous are always the top of the food pyramid and the most numerous are down here at the bottom. Now, the, food, the pyramid of numbers represents the relative number of organisms at each feeding level. Let's look at an example. Here's an example here of a fresh water um, pyramid of numbers. You've got loads and loads and loads, up to 800 more algae, tiny little things, which are eaten by water fleas. You can see here the water fleas, perhaps 400, is it? Then we've got minnows, not so many minnows, and at the top here, only one or two perch. Now, sometimes it gets a little bit confusing. Now, here's a different sort of pyramid numbers. Now, this one here, yeah, it looks a bit skewed, doesn't it? What's this at the bottom? Well, rather than counting the number of rose leaves, we just got it as a bush. So it'd be one, wouldn't it? One bush. One bush is fed upon by hundreds of aphids, which are fed upon by few ladybirds and very, very few blue tits. So this just shows another way of representing it, whereas this case here, the rose bush represents one bush rather than all the thousands of leaves we know are present on that bush. Okay, so that's an idea there about pyramid of numbers. Now we could also have pyramid of biomass. So if this is pyramid of biomass, this would be much clearer. A rose bush obviously has a mass much greater than the aphids. That would show it more clearly, wouldn't it? And similarly, pyramid of energy. The energy, again, would be much bigger in the rose bush, bush, bush than it would in the, in the aphids. So these are just pyramids of numbers, but we can look at pyramids of biomass and also pyramids of energy. Now, this is all a little bit simplistic. Why? Well, it's a little think. Okay. Now, food chains are rather oversimplification of what happens in nature. Our barn owl over here is our barn owl. Our barn owl does not just eat blue tits. It's got a bit of a varied diet. It consists of other small animals as well. So it could be mice, it could be shrews. Okay, so let's think this more carefully. What we need to look at really is what's called a food web. So to show the relationship between organisms more accurately, we need to draw not a food chain, but a food web. So a food web is showing a more extensive view of this. Let's see what I mean. Here we got a food web. Now you could look at this as being a group of food chains just bolted together. So grass is eaten by a beetle, eaten by a fox. That there represents one simple food chain. But the beetle is also eaten by the owl. So the food chain could go in that direction there. Now the rat, well the rat is um, eats the, the grass, the vegetation. That could be eaten by the fox or it could be eaten by the owl or it could be eaten over here by the stoat. And lastly, the rabbit could be eaten again by all three. So you can see that a food web is actually a more complex version showing what perhaps is more realistic in wildlife, in real life. So the owl would not just eat one um, animal, it'll eat a whole range. It'll eat beetles, it'll eat rats, it'll eat rabbits. Now we can start thinking now what happens if something goes wrong within the food web. Suppose, for example, that the rabbits, for some horrible reason, all the rabbits die out. 
okay, what would happen to the other animals in the food web? Well, in fact, it would have a rather large impact. Let's think about it. If the rabbit dies out, what happened first of all to our top carnivores here? Well, first of all, the foxes, owls, and stoats will therefore have to eat more beetles, okay, and more rats. So these two would be eaten more because these three are all competing for food. And that would mean that these two here, their populations would go down. Big arrow there showing down, okay? Now, there's another implication there as well, because as the beetle and rat population, po populations go down, there's less food available for the fox, owl, and stoat. And guess what? The fox, owl, and stoat populations also drop, unless they could find an alternative source of food. Okay? So that's the impacted changes to a food web. So I hope you understand now the difference between the food web and also a food chain. Let's just check. Do we know this? Do we know that food webs may be composed of several food chains? I think we know that. Big tick. And no difference between a food chain and a food web? I think we know the difference between the two, don't you? So big tick there. Now, let us spend a little bit of time now looking at an exam question. Hmm, I know we hate these. Here's an exam question, okay? Sunhill and Elsa investigated a food chain in a local park. They counted the number of oak trees. They counted the number of aphids feeding on the leaves of the oak trees. Then they counted the number of ladybirds feeding on aphids. You get the idea there? Now in the space below draw the food chain linking the oak trees, aphids and ladybirds. So you want to now draw a food chain linking those three. I've got the answer, but if you want to have a go at yourself, then pause the video at this point, have a go write down the answer. So, here is that food chain. We've got oak tree, aphids, ladybirds. If you've got that, give yourself two marks. Now, Elsa says the number of aphids depends on the number of oak trees. Sunhill says the number of aphids depends on the number of ladybirds present. Explain both of these statements. Okay? Now, again, pause if you want to go at it yourself. If not, I'll give you the answer in just a moment. Okay. So the more oak trees there are, and so therefore more leaves, the more food is aphids, and so the numbers will increase. Okay, so we've done there, fine. However, the more ladybirds there are, the more aphids will get eaten, so the numbers will decrease. So we explain that one as well. Okay, so if you've got that answer there, okay, you can give yourself four marks. Let's look at another part of the question. Now, the table below shows the total number of organisms present in the food chain in the wood. Ladybird 350, aphid 1150, oak tree there are 5. Here we've got a pyramid of numbers. Okay, we've seen these before in this video, but also we've seen this sort of shape, which is a bit of a strange shape. It's not the one we normally have because what we've got down here. Okay, looks a bit strange, doesn't it? Explain the shape of the pyramid numbers. So, can you explain the shape of this pyramid here? If one other go, pause the video. Okay, if you want the answer, Go through it in three seconds. Two, one, go. Okay, right. The pyramid of numbers shows a small number of oak trees down here. Okay, supports a large number of aphids. That's these here, which in turn support a smaller number of ladybirds up here. Okay, so we've explained now the shape of the pyramid. Small number of oak trees, large number of aphids, and a small number of ladybirds. If you've got that, give yourself another two marks. Well done. So that's it. I hope, and I hope you've enjoyed this um, video about feeding relationships. I just want to thank you for listening and thank you for watching. I'm going to say bye-bye for now.